did not teach or that he taught against, either in word or in example or both. Never ever did Yahshua eat anything unclean, nor did his disciples, neither before his death nor, nor after his death and resurrection. Next. I will also read the following verses since we already skipped to verse 9. Verse 5. Uh, verse 5. Summing up some unclean animals and the rabbit because it chews the cut but does not have a split root. It is unclean to you. And the hare because it chews the cut but does not have a split root. It is unclean to you. And the pig, though it has a split root completely divided, yet does not chew the cut, it is unclean to you. Their flesh you do not eat, and their carcasses you do not touch. They are unclean to you. Duck. Um, well, duck. <laughs> we, I think we will come to duck later on. <laughs> Next, about birds. Here's a bird. Uh, it says here, their carcasses you do, you do not touch. They are unclean to you. Uh, obviously, uh, we can touch. A living pig, huh? That's not... As long as the pig is alive, you can touch it. Remember, uh, in, old, uh, in the olden times, in ancient Israel, they had horses. And they ro rode on horsebacks or they rode on donkeys. So all of these are unclean animals. So you can eat unclean animals, you can even keep a pig at home if for whatever reason you think it's useful to have a pig at home. Well, that's fine, you know, that's not a sin. As long as you don't eat it, when you set it, huh? well, you should not slaughter it in order to eat it. Uh, and also you should not touch its carcass once it's dead. So these animals are, in a sense, they are unclean when they are no longer alive. You should certainly not eat them, not even touch them. By the way, if in school the children have, uh, uh, how do you call it, section of frogs or so, a frog is an unclean animal. Eh? So you should tell the teacher, my child cannot do that. They cannot touch anything unclean. <laughs> To examine the marks in fishes so as to distinguish the clean from the unclean. Leviticus 11 verse 9. Can read that for us? Oh, verse okay, 11 verse 9. Uh, this you do eat all that are in the waters. The wa anyone that has fins and scales in the waters, in the seas or in the rivers, and that you do eat. Uh, but all that have not fins and scales in the seas, in the water and rivers, and all that move in the waters or any living creatures which in the water, they are abomination to you. Okay, that was verses 9 and 10. That can belong together. As it uh, summarizes there, a clean fish must have fins and scales. It does not say how many fins nor how many scales, but it must have fins and scales. Um, well, this can be trickier. Um, in the supermarket, you can find uh, canned food, and it might say something like, contains fish, contains fish, no. or something like, what is it? Robot? Uh, contains fish, but you don't know which fish. Our our stance is, uh, I always say to people, whenever in doubt, it's better to err on the side of prudence. Uh, it's better not to eat something if you're not sure whether it's clean or unclean, if you cannot know it. Huh? It's better to... 
from E to G. Uh, I assume that everyone knows that uh, Anasius is unclean fish. Anasius is unclean fish. Famous uh, tilapia clean fish. Uh, I saw in Pure Gold, I think, they are selling, or they were selling a couple of weeks ago, probably constantly. Green Dory, something like that, and it's made of Pangasius. Catfish. So it's uh, unclean. 